Hey guys, David Fine from Watch Your Lip. This is our beach fishing fast fish how-to series. We're going to teach you how to catch big fish from the beach and be successful. Guys, today we are going to teach you how to catch a permit from the beach. Most fishermen spend their entire lives trying to catch a permit and they never do. Guys, we're going to show you how to do that. Get ready for this video. We are super excited about this fish. Check it out. The permit, Trachonotus falcatus. It's like hooking into a freight train, guys, and it's a very, very elusive fish. Most people never catch one, and it's because they only eat shellfish. If you're not using a live crab or even a frozen crab, you're probably not going to hook a big permit. Some people catch them accidentally with sand fleas or they're fishing with shrimp. Uh, and they're, they're kind of piddling around with live shrimp and a, and a permit will actually come and eat the shrimp and then they'll get hooked into a freight train. They'll get spooled. Well, that was a big permit. But guys, the best way to catch a big permit, we're going to show you how to do that in a minute. So if you look at the anatomy of a permit, uh, you're going to see a few things. You're going to see that it has these great big nostrils and it has a very highly developed sense of smell. So they can smell the shellfish. You're gonna see that they have an enormous eye uh, and that's used for locating the shellfish. They're finding these speckled crabs, which is predominantly their main source of food on the beaches of South Florida. They eat sand fleas, they eat speckled crabs or calico crabs as we call them. They'll eat blue crabs uh, and that's what they're eating on the flats. And those crabs all bury themselves underneath the sand trying to get away from the permit. Well, the permit have these great big eyes they see very well, they smell very well. They're, they're incredibly strong fish. They have this huge paddle tail, which is, is a, you know, I would not want to be a crab looking at a permit. And actually, if you look at the, if you look dead on at a permit, you can actually see that their eyes are actually pointed down. So actually while they're swimming straight, their eyes are actually pointed down at the sand so that they don't have to look down or point their whole head down. Their eyes are actually naturally pointed down towards the sand. So they're constantly looking for crabs. So for most of the year, permit are actually offshore and they're out on deep shore, uh, deep reefs and wrecks. They hang out in shipwrecks. In fact, a lot of times, they're caught out on shipwrecks when people are fishing for things like grouper and snapper and they're using shellfish bait. Uh, but in the spring months, probably around, I'd say March, April, more so commonly in May and June, they come right into the beaches in Southeast Florida and they are all over the place. And here's the thing, very few people fish for them because very few people are willing to sit there and soak a crab down on the sand for hours and hours waiting for a permit to hit. But they're actually all over the beaches. They're very common. They come right up into the shallow waters onto the sandbars and, and at high tide, I think they even come in past the sandbar into the trough looking for crabs, looking for sand fleas. They will eat during the day and they'll eat at night. They have no problem hunting nocturnally because of that big eye they can see at night as well. When you're fishing for permit, it takes time, guys. That's the big thing. You got to be patient. There's many nights where you go out, you put your crabs out, you think everything's right, and you don't get a hit. Well, that's part of the deal, and that's probably why a lot of people give up on permit fishing because they just lack the patience, and they're not going to be able to put the time in. But if you put the time in, and you put the right bait out in the right place in the right time, eventually you're going to hook up, and you're going to hook up big. So what's the tactic? I like outgoing tide when fishing for permit. It seems like a, a greater percentage of our hookups come during the outgoing tide. I believe it's because the, the water is retra retracting, it's receding, okay? And the sand fleas and the crabs actually have to unbury themselves and move further down into the water. So they're exposing themselves and the permit are just picking them off as the as the crabs, as the sand fleas are, are exposing themselves to get back into the deeper water. I believe that's when the permit are very strategically hunting there. We hook up a lot on the outgoing tide. Um, you don't have to get the bait all 
out that far. We try to get them out past the sandbar, just past the sandbar. And it's May seems to be the number one month. May, June into July seems to be the hottest time of the year for catching permit on the beach. And, you know, as far as strategy as to where, guys, try out different beaches because we've found them on at least four different beaches. I think they're everywhere. Anywhere that those speckled crabs exist, I believe that the permit are there. And you put your baits out, you're going to hook up. Now, uh, there's a whole other video we have on how to find the bait, how to find crabs, and how to catch them. So check that video out and help you be successful on how to catch your crabs for bait. But once you have your calico crab, you know, what a few things you want to do is you want to pinch the diggers off, those hind legs, because that's what the crab uses to dig underneath the... Uh, uh, underneath the sand. So you pinch those off. You can take the claws off if you want. We take them off. We don't feel like getting pinched. And then we clip the, the little point on the ends of the shell. We clip those off. And here's why. We know that permit have a very highly advanced sense of smell. And if you clip those things off, I believe that the permit will smell the injured crab. They'll smell a bleeding crab and they'll come and they'll find your bait more readily. So you get your crab, um, you can actually use frozen crabs. We've actually had surprisingly good luck using frozen crabs for bait. They don't have to be live and fresh. I obviously prefer live and fresh, but don't hesitate. If you fish all night with your crabs and you're like, man, uh, it took forever to get bait. Well, put them in a Ziploc bag and pop them in your freezer and bring them out and use them again. I've actually caught permit on crabs that have been refrozen five times. And so that's surprising to some, but permit will eat a bait. As long as it's not spoiled or rotten, you, know, you can freeze them and reuse them again. Uh, now, where do you hook your crab? That's a great question because what permit do is they actually have a plate on the top of their mouth and they'll suck the bait in and they'll crush it. And what they'll do is they'll pop a crab has two shells. It has a top shell and a bottom shell. The meat on the crab is all attached to the bottom shell. So what they do is they'll crush the crab and the top shell will pop off and then they'll eat the softer bottom shell along with all the meat of the crab, leaving the top shell to float away, right? Because it's, it's really nothing. There's no meat attached to that top shell. So what I would do is there's a, a soft place or there's a, actually a joint in the back leg, the digger, you put your point of the hook inside of that joint, and then you can wiggle that point of the hook up through the top shell of the crab, somewhere in the middle. I use a very large circle hook, probably a number five or a 5 or 6 circle hook. Um, you don't need a heavy leader, maybe 40 pound test at the most. Uh, you, permit can be leader shy. Remember, they have a really good sense of sight, eyesight. So you don't want a too heavy of a leader and they have no teeth. They've got human lips. I call them Mr. Human lips <laughs> because their, their mouth looks like it's got human lips. So they're not going to bite through your line. Okay. They're, they, they're, they can't fray your line. They've got nothing to fray your line. They've got nothing to bite through your line. So you're really left with a very gummy, uh, fleshy, uh, fish. And so you don't need a heavy leader. You just need that shock leader, probably a 40 pound, four foot leader. Uh, you can use a, a slider rig works very well. Uh, so you got your five O circle hook, four foot, 40 pound leader, fluorocarbon leader to a swivel. Then you put a bead and maybe a four O uh, pyramid sinker, or you can use a Sputnik weight if there's a lot of current or weeds and you, you, you hook your bait, your crab and you throw it out, get it out past the sandbar. And then you just put your rod in a rod holder and, and hold on tight. So guys, I would leave the your rod in gear. Make sure your sand spike is pounded down nice and tight so that uh, when the fish hits, that it's not gonna take your rod into the water. So leave your rod in gear with a fairly light drag, just tight enough where when the fish hits it, it's gonna set the hook, but not too tight where it's gonna pull your rod out into the water. Capiche? Okay, very important. Play with that a little bit. And, you know, actually before you cast, you know, put your rod in the rod holder and pull it out with your hand 
and see what happens to your rod. If, if you can pull the line out with your hand and your rod stays put, um, that's probably a good place to go uh, with how tight to tighten your drag. And so then when you when that fish hits, it's like a freight train, guys. It's a very powerful fish. You're in for a great fight. They're going to take a lot of drag because it's a very, very powerful fish. So be patient with it. Again, it's got no teeth. It's not going to fray you off or bite through your line. So, so just be patient. Wait until he's done. Gets tired. Let your drag fight the fish. Don't try to muscle him because he'll win. Okay, it's stronger than you are. So when he gets tired... Then you start to bring them in and you got to be patient because when that permit sees the beach, he's going to freak out, guaranteed, and he's going to take off again and so you just got to wait him out. You got to be patient. You got to get the, get it done and eventually he'll get tired. I always bring a big dip net with me, like large enough where I can actually scoop the, uh, scoop the fish in and uh, avoid all the shoreline drama of possibly losing a fish. So always bring a dip net with me to land the fish that way. All right, folks, so now you've caught your permit. Now, can you keep them? Guys, permit makes some of the best eating fish that I've had. I absolutely love permit. In fact, there's that top loin up on the shoulder that makes great sashimi. Uh, my, my daughter and I tear up the permit sashimi every time we get a chance. And it makes a great, great fish. It's a great firm white meat and you catch one fish and you're feeding a bunch of people. So it's a great meaty fish. Now, um, harvesting them, you gotta make sure you're paying attention to your laws. You gotta have a license, gotta have a fishing license. Go on to www.myfwc to check out the latest regulations. Make sure that you're in sync with the regulations. There is, there's a two fish per person harvest bag limit and there's a slot on one of the fish. It's gotta be between 11 inches and 22, which is not a very big fish. It's only, you know, we're talking a fish this big. I've never caught a fish this big on the beach. We're always, we're always up here. So they're always above slot. So we're allowed one fish over 22 inches per angler per day in Palm Beach and Broward counties. When you get into Biscayne Bay and the Florida Keys, the, the laws change. There's actually a season on them down there. Up where we are in Broward County, Palm Beach County, there's no season as of right now. Uh, Biscayne Bay, Florida Keys, uh, let me check real quick. The season is from April 1st to July 31st. Permit season is closed from April 1st to July 31st in Biscayne Bay and the Florida Keys. You can't harvest them. Uh, if it's outside of that time, you can harvest, but it's only one, one fish per angler and it's got to be above 22 inches. So... Uh, guys, make sure you're in with the laws. These things change from time to time. So if this video is older now and you, you know, make sure you're checking myfwc.org and checking with the latest regulations so that you don't get caught with an illegal fish. Make sure you're keeping them. And so a lot of people actually practice catch and release with the permit. And I totally respect that. And we release a few here and there uh, because it is a very beautiful fish. It's a very powerful predator and they deserve our respect. So uh, mad respect to the catch and release guys for releasing your permit. Guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Go to the beach. It's a very underfished species. So there's actually a really good chance of catching a permit. You just gotta put your time in with the right bait. Guys, God bless, take care. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up if you learned something. Comment down below if you have any anything additional that you'd like to share about permit fishing from the beach. Okay, it's a lot different ball game on a boat, but if you're on the beach, give me a comment down below if you have any experiences with permit or tell me about what you'd like me to focus on in future videos. So guys, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We got plenty more videos where this came from. Guys, God bless, take care. Let's get out there and rip a human lip on a permit. Guys, watch your lip. Take care. Charlie Perda, come here. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. These guys, take a bow, take a bow, guys. Charlie. Eric, <laughs> give us a tails up. Tails up, come on. <laughs>